Hey guys, Jan Heyer here, Northview Model Shop, with the final video on the Cranky Nation Racing P51D Mustang. Uh, what we've got here is the Revell P51D Mustang kit, mixed it with the Dr. Cranky decal sheet to build a Reno Racing, a Reno Air Race Mustang. This is what we've got. This turned out, for me, turned out amazing. Uh, probably by far my best painting job uh, and decaling wise I think this is probably way up there with one of my better jobs uh, I mean I don't hold a candle some of you other guys out there can do wicked building but for me this was a personal best and, and I'm going to take it as a triumph for me uh, it was a fun build I got right into it, it to the point where I, what, there's only one or two videos that I have in this uh, and I didn't really take a lot of pictures either just bang bang but I was always going at it for the uh, for building something right, uh, decaling it. When, when the decaling come in, it was like at 3 a.m. I was like, oh, I better stop because it was just like you put lay like, decal and look and see where it was and and plan your next one. It was it was a fun build. Um, on top of decaling, let's go over this very quickly. Uh, I'm just trying to get the light here so you're gonna see the best you can. But uh, the checkered nose piece is from the Revell kit. It's a huge decal. It doesn't lay very well, so it's doesn't look good up close and in person. At 100 miles an hour at Reno, you're never going to see it, so let's not worry. Our sponsorship here is out of a Jeff Gordon decal set, or Jeff Gordon uh, NASCAR kit. And the decals never got used, so we use them. I, I, I knew when I applied them I was in trouble because the kit is a very old kit. The decals were orange or yellow really bad, so I knew I was going to have some marking and some... Nah, but after the code of future went over it, it kind of hid those colorings. So we're all right. I went with the Dr. Cranky Rods, Rats, and Rust. Uh, maybe we'll just go this route here. Uh, decals on the wings and on the sides. It's the kind of the, they look the best to me. The cranky head on each side. Ooh, almost lost her. Uh, Igor got in a little dog fight with somebody here, so he's got some bullet holes. But uh, he's playing still in good shape, so he must have won. But uh, we all know, obviously, that Igor loves styrene. Um, and the skulls are cool. They kind of don't fit very well to the, the, the idea, but I liked them, so on they went. One thing I didn't, uh, kind of still wonder what I'm going to do, and I'm probably at this day empty, is the rear wings here don't have anything on them. And I don't think I could add anything that wouldn't overpower the plane and make it look just crowded and a toy, right? Um... Besides that, the kit is a very simple build. You're looking at um, pretty well just building the exterior. The, there's no engine, which I believe was um, the original Mustang came with Rolls-Royce engines. There's no motor included in the kit, just exhaust exhaust set that hangs at the side. You know, cone goes over the front of the plane and that is it. The interior is a very simple uh, uh, seat and uh, seat uh, stick. And I think it's a radio setup behind the seat. Very simple. Like you're talking like a five minute build for that. It's, it's, there's nothing to it. Landing gear is very simple. And then that's it. So I spent the bulk of my time uh, gluing everything together, sanding, filling, sanding again, and smoothing it as best I can. Uh, one thing I did learn though is I didn't, I don't have too much, I think, of a jump. I go from a 220 to do my rough right to 600. I need to find a grit in between to really really clean things up before moving to six because I have some scratch marks which uh, if I was building a shiny 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 car that would be a problem building a plane not that big of a deal really um, another thing was my uh, my black wash that I laid over the whole thing I did not allow enough dry time before I applied my future to finish up I was in a rush I ended up picking all my wash out and moving it all around in weird spots and again in the plane it just looks like it's been very very dirty and, and raced a lot so it's it it was a good mistake, I guess you'd say. Um, I was trying to think of anything else I wanted to go over. Uh, paint job. I know we talked about trying to do paint. A lot of people suggested the flat black, and, and that was my original plan was flat black, but the Viper was just done in flat black, so I felt like I'd just be running, you know, beating a dead horse, right? I didn't want to do two or three kits right in a row all flat black. It would, wasn't a challenge at this point, right? Uh, save that maybe for next time, or do some shiny colors, and then maybe go back to a flat black one again, right? story behind what we ended up laying down with this color was I feared that I would go and the reason I wanted to do something different was because I was scared if I went and did um, 
I wanted to airbrush, so I knew if I mixed my paint and sprayed it and it turned out really well, I wasn't going to want to lay flat black over it. And yes, that is what happened. I mixed up my airbrush paint. I'll put this down and tell the story. I mixed up my airbrush paint. I just used, uh, this is the one obviously, but Tester's little enamel uh, f uh, flat aluminum. I cut it with uh, the Tester's universal enamel thinner. Uh, a full one of these of paint and then filling with the thinner half full, mixing it up, come up with my paint. And uh, it looked good, so I went and sprayed. But before I sprayed, I saw, thought about one of Dave Parker's air, airbrush Christmas videos where he had said to, um, he's having troubles and he suggested dumping, uh, jumping down a needle size, going from a heavy to a medium needle. Dr. Cranky elaborated further on that and said to set up your airbrush so instead of just a nice aerosol can spray, you want almost a lot lighter mist. So I set everything up like this, went out at 18 pounds of pressure on my, on my airbrush and I painted the kit. I noticed a lot of time was going by and I wasn't getting very good coverage. There was a lot of misting. I was getting worried. I was like, man, I'm going to run out of paint. So I kind of eyed down my bottle. My bottle's still over half full. So I said, well, these guys know what they're talking about. So we kept going. And when, at the end of the day, when the model was painted, it looked wicked. There was no paint problem. There was no runs. There was no spitting. Any The paint wasn't rough. It was really, really well done. Um, and then I applied a, uh, a coat of Future Floor Wax, buffed it out with the bounce sheet, and I got a flat aluminum that shined. It shined really well. It looks awesome. I'm impressed. So I got the itch to airbrush again. So the next uh, next kit that's going to be done over the Christmas break here, I want to go full out and do the shiniest of the shiny if I possibly can. So look forward to that. So guys, hopefully you tune in for that. But uh, thanks a million guys for all the views we get on these plain ones. I know a lot of people aren't too much interested in planes and more pair guys out there in, in, uh, in YouTube land and my subscribers. But I think for the new year what we're going to do is run a schedule here of a plane, a car, a plane, a car, and just alternate back and forth and we'll keep everybody happy and everybody be tuned in. So thanks guys. Adios.